Good afternoon, everyone. Ocasio-Cortez, been talking about the Green Deal. Want to renew America's infrastructure completely to wind turbines and solar panels. Direct message to Ocasio-Cortez. I've just been up in the Zagreb Nikola Tesla Laboratory and I saw 18 different free power devices that utilize Earth's magnetic field to generate power. Can be done locally for local neighborhoods, local cities. If you start to talk about this, even though our politics are incredibly different, I will support that. If I see you on the floor of the house pushing for the release of these patents that Nikola Tesla has at the very beginning, and talking about gravitational vortex power, which is a one to two cubic meter per second flow in a circular basin that can produce power locally, I'll support that. If you talk about Marconi, Brown, and Rife devices with electrogravitics that produce free power locally, I'll support that. But so far, all I've ever heard is wind turbines, solar panels. That's a great idea, but during times of low solar activity, as we're forecast to go into the lowest solar activity in the last 400 years, there's declines in the total solar irradiance, meaning how much sunlight can strike those solar panels, not only through the Oort minimum, but the Wolf minimum, Maunder minimum, significant drops. You have the loss over time of efficiency just in the industry standards. That's the thing. Every grand solar minimum, there's more volcanic eruptions. We can go back into the BC era. We can take it all the way through the last 2,000 years. Whenever there's low solar activity, we get major volcanic eruptions and more dust in the atmosphere, thereby reducing solar output even further in the panels. Look at Krakatoa. That was a huge eruption. Soputan, Etna, Steamboat Geyser, the most active it's been on record. We even have massive eruptions on Jupiter's moon Io. This is all forecast heading into the grand solar minimum that's going to affect crop production as well. I am shocked that the politicians in our day and age are not bringing this to the forefront. Now, Ocasio-Cortez, I'm not sure if you just don't know about these devices or if you just don't want to talk about them. I'm not sure. I really don't know. That's why I want to present this to you so you can go ahead and if I see you actually present this and put your impetus behind it to get it on the floor in any part of our American government, I will support that. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard of this new, what's considered the Green Deal. It's about installing solar panels, retrofitting coastal infrastructure, manufacturing electric vehicles, going to wind turbines, etc. Full transition from anything fossil fuel based in the United States over into 100% renewable power. They're calling it decarbonizing. This also includes a side clause to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. Anything wind, solar, or biomass, geothermal are in. Anything coal, natural gas, oil, nuclear power are completely out. Now with the rollout of complete renewables, this is also going to include a smart electrical grid. The problem is they don't have all the storage set up for this because Wind and solar are very unreliable, so you're going to have to have storage mechanisms to store power when electricity is being generated at optimal times during the days, and then there'll be blackout periods during evening or when there's no wind, you'll have to store that power. And even just the generating capacity, which means the wind turbines, the solar panels, maybe the geothermal plants themselves, looking at an excess of $2 trillion. Now, here's what's not being taken into consideration, at least in my point of view. The Grand Solar Minimum, this is termed the EDDY, E-D-D-Y, Grand Solar Minimum. They happen on recurring 400-year cycles when it's extreme low activity in our sun. It affects crop production. It affects the seasons, the jet streams, cloud patterns, volcanic activity, and literally how much sunlight strikes the surface of the planet. Now this in itself, with the amount of sunlight striking the surface of the planet and the solar panels, is reduced minimally from 1,366 watts per meter squared down to about 1,360, 1,358 watts per meter squared. 
Oort minimum, have to go back 1,000 years. Wolf minimum, 1,300. Maunder minimum, about 1,640 to 1,710. We see steep drop-offs there. The thing is, every single Grand Solar minimum, we get the reduction in TSI, which is the total solar radiance, but there is a 100% correlation of Grand Solar minimums and increased volcanic activity. Now, if we start in the B.C. era, even going back to 244 B.C., we see it, 46 B.C., 79 A.D., that was the Vesuvius eruption. And then when we get further into, you start to see clusters in the Grand Solar Minimums of massive eruptions. That 600 era, 550, 600 era, late antique little ice age. And then we progress through the 1200s, that's the U.N. dynasty, Chinese emperors wiped out. Spore minimum, wolf minimum, again, it's the same exact thing happening. Volcanic activity. This is a zoom in here of the amount of ash cover globally during the late antique little ice age. The reason I bring this up is it really shows you we're looking for increase in volcanic ash pervading the atmosphere. Now looking back over the last 1500 years, this is the stratospheric volcanic sulfates, literally sulfur dioxide when it's ejected out of volcanic eruptions into the atmosphere blocking sunlight, is different than ash blocking sunlight. But we get both. It's a volcano. Seems like the largest amount of sulfates in the atmosphere, right around 1260, 1270, again in the 1450s, 1800, Tambor, a year without a summer. These are all grand solar minimums. Now, in my estimation, this is what it's going to lead to. Clean me, please. Yeah, great for jobs of cleaners, bad for output. This is what I feel is one of the drawbacks. Is anybody really looking at this part of the reduction in capacity to generate power? Also, if we just look at the industry standards, 10% decline over 10 years, and then a 20% decline just on wear and tear. So this is a diminishing return. Now, if you add in the volcanic dust, and reduction in TSI, etc. Solar panels are not really the best option going into this grand solar minimum. Cloudy days, we're expecting more clouds due to galactic cosmic rays. Again, with the aerosols, when we look back through these exact same grand solar minimums, this came from the same report, those blue bars are the Oort minimum and the Wolf minimum. There's always more clouds and rain associated with the minimums as well because weather patterns move. There's also temperature drops along with the volcanic eruption, so you know there has to be an enormous amount of ash in the air to drop global temperatures, enough that it's going to affect solar panel output for sure. Absolutely no questions asked. Now we're heading into this grand solar minimum. Here's the forecast. We are going into absolutely the lowest solar activity we have seen in 400 years on this regular cycle. And a volcanic uptick is what you would be looking for. And have you noticed over the last couple of years the increase in not only the size of the eruptions, but the number of eruptions? The tsunami over in Indonesia, look at Krakatau, before and after. That's how much of the island blew away in this small eruption. This ash cloud went up around 70,000 feet, this eruption. And a glimpse into what was lost during that eruption here, Anak Krakatau. Did have a thousand foot summit, but that's back down to sea level pretty much. And here in the close up, I'll zoom that in for you. You can see on the right side the before and after how much the island blew away in this single eruption. Expect more and stronger eruptions as we move forward. Soputan as well. The Indonesian archipelago seems to have an enormous amount of volcanoes going off. It's exactly what happened during these last grand solar minimums. And Manam as well in Papua New Guinea. It's as if we are reliving history in a cycle. Because we are. Soputan, Etna. And here's the other boxes that you can check too to verify there's more activity subsurface on our planet. Steamboat Geyser, most eruptions ever recorded in a full year. This goes back what? Into the mid 1800s? National Park Service verifies. It eclipsed the last record set in 1964. 29 eruptions, 1964. This year, 34. And if it was an effect from our sun electromagnetically causing these eruptions, we should also see eruptions on other bodies in our solar system, should we not? So if we take a look at Io, the moon of Jupiter, massive eruption, the most active volcanic hotspot in our solar system right here. Suddenly triggered, and we see changes on our planets and everywhere you look. Now, the reason I bring that up is we're going to need different power supplies moving into this grand solar minimum. 
The stress on the surface of our Earth in terms of weather, volcanoes, and earthquakes, the traditional grid we have just not going to cut it anymore. So local generation for local consumption is the way we need to think for this. Gravitational vortex power, which I mentioned in the introduction, incredibly simple to operate and install. You need a 5.5 meter diameter circle to spin that water in a tank and you put the rotor right in the center. The water goes out from beneath. You don't dam anything. You just use the water for a few seconds to make it spin. I've linked everything below so you can go ahead and get the patents, the diagrams, the engineering schematics, so you can go ahead and test this yourself. Everything is here for you, along with some of the companies currently in the forefront of this industry. Zolt Lauterer out of Germany. Again, they show you how to build it. They show you how to install it. It's there. It's for real. These things generate 50 thousand kilowatts off of one single tiny little plant and they can be stepped down in a riverbed as well it's on the shore it's not in the middle you don't need to dam the river and these can be put out so fast because it's literally a concrete basin that is a circle put the rotor in that's it really that simple that's local production for local consumption we don't need massive transmission lines with this we're going to move over here to using the Earth's magnetic field to power devices. This is a ferrocell lens, quite easy to see the magnetic field lines here. These are some of the inventions that have been worked on and not allowed to come to commercial production due to constraints in certain industries that don't want free power out there or localized power, which you can produce in your home, in your neighborhood. These are just some examples here. Again, a look at some ferrocells. Some patents that are out here, some motors that are in actual real production. People have built home units, but it's not gone into the factory mass production. I just don't understand why. These permanent magnet generators are just using magnets like you had when you were a kid. You try to squeeze them together. They bounce apart. This is the same thing, bringing up a notch in intensity and use industrial magnets, and we do the exact same thing. All they do is push each other away using the Earth's magnetic field. Here we go, right in front of your eyes. See, these are working models of what is out there. You don't see these in commercial production. These units here are enough to power a home. Put two of them, you can run everything that you have in your house, your washer, your dryer, your air conditioner, your oven. You can have every appliance on, computers, everything. Locally generated right in your house. And if you overgenerate, you can split it off and go to your neighbor. These things are working, they're in universities, but they're just not in commercial production. There's so many different types of designs of these out there. And Ocasio-Cortez, if you really want to talk about new power for a new America, this is it right here. This is where we need to start. You got to scrap the entire old system. We don't need centralized power. Produce in a huge, giant centralized location and then distributed through a centralized system. Why don't we just go to independent power production in our homes, in our neighborhoods, for local consumption in that area within a mile or less? This Grand Solar Minimum is a society reset button in itself. Just for the very aspect of the decrease in the grain yields globally that are continuing now, which will amplify in the future, look for major, major price rises around 2020. And it's going to amplify from that point forward. The yields are going to decrease. And with a volcanic uptick happening on our planet, this is what your solar panels are going to turn into. It's truly a time to rethink the paradigm, to rethink this whole power for us on our planet. Here's some more diagrams for you. I've linked everything below. Again, go ahead. These are the engineering drawings. These are the patents out there. You can go ahead and take a look at these. Some of them are from the 1800s, some of them from the 1960s. And the more research you do, I've linked everything through Google Patents. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these devices to allow us to have free power. Now, Ocasio-Cortez, it is now your job to go out and bring this to us. You want the new Green Deal? This is the new Green Deal. Not solar panels and not wind. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, you can get it 30 minutes on the go. Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. Anywhere a podcast is hosted across the net. And if you want to watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get the latest updates.